Hi y'all, I'm Allison. Today's the big day. We get to find out what's going to happen at the end of The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. That's right, we're going to bring our third Start and Stop Buddy Read to a close. But before we do all of that, I have to give the warning. There are going to be tons of spoilers, including the ending of the book, in this video. So if you have not reached the end of your book, then you're going to want to back on out of here and either find the video where you should be or grab a copy of the book and start at the very beginning with our first stop because we are having a lot of fun speculating and guessing our way through this book and I would love for you to join us. All right, now for those of y'all who have already read everything, let's take a look at where we are before I go into the living room, start reading and reacting and find out what's going to happen. So far, everybody seems to kind of have mixed feelings about the book. I personally still love the writing style, but you know, I, I, I do have some issues with the book itself and I'm not the only one. Sarah Hart's books, first of all, she did what I did and went right past the stopping point, but uh, Sarah threw out another wild theory that, you know, I got you thinking about it. Uh, there may be something to that, Sarah, because she was saying, oh, what if? Robert has really been behind everything all along. And if he orchestrated Edward and Harriet meeting way back when, when they were in London, and I would not be surprised by that. Cause I was kind of, you know, I had the flip version that Harriet kind of planned that meeting. It wasn't as, you know, happenstance as it may have seemed. But I think Sarah's theory may have a little bit more water to it. As we know, there is a connection between them before she ever met Edward, and that is the publishing company. You know, and Robert did seem excited that she was a thriller writer at the very beginning. So I don't know, maybe somehow she got on his radar. Probably very unlikely, but who, who knows? You know, wild theories, that, that's what we're running with. So say that somehow she got on his radar. He already knew about the accident with her parents and what she actually did. And what if he sent Edward there on purpose, hoping to bring Harriet, Harriet into his little net? That, that's, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised by anything at this point. So we'll see Sarah, if you got it. Sarah was also kind of chuckling at herself going, this is really wild and out there, but you know, you, you could be right, who knows? Okay, Stacy L said it would have been a deal breaker for her, no doubt, after that Krampus night, after what she was subjected to. And she also had issue with, you know, the young children being exposed to this. And I got to thinking about this later. In, fa in fact, a lot, because definitely that Krampus evening was, you know, that, that was pretty hardcore. So it kind of sticks with you. And uh, I remembered that when she was talking to, I don't know who it was, somebody in the family that, oh, well, the kids get ice cream if they're found. I would assume the kids would have told each other, hey, if we get caught, we get ice cream. So I can't see them really wanting to try very hard to hide. You know, they're not going to hide for hours on end. You know, they might do it at first because it's fun to run, you know, and scream through the house because you're normally not allowed to do that. And, you know, the little adrenaline rush. And then would have, they would have been like, okay, you can catch me now. I'm bored. I want my ice cream. And they would have told her, and, you know, especially little Billy, unless this was his first time doing it, which I don't think it was, but he would have just been, if nothing else, can I have my ice cream now? So just throwing that out there. And Michael, he, he was like me. He was quite a put out that the 13 year old didn't know what the word hereditary means. I mean, come on. And he especially pointed out, she knew placard and she knew where the sick would be hiding immediately, but she didn't know the word hereditary. And I agree. Stacy L pointed out that, and this didn't like ruin the book or anything. It was just kind of something that was kind of nagging at her. And that's Harriet is eight weeks pregnant at Thanksgiving. And then three weeks later for the Krampus scene, she's still eight weeks pregnant. And then it jumps to where she's 12 weeks pregnant. So those little inconsistencies. So I think, this book definitely could have used another round with the editor. 
to catch all of these little things. Because if they would have changed the 13-year-old down to an 8-year-old, then maybe the word hereditary would have been, you know, caused them to stumble a little bit. And then they would have catch the mistakes with the how far she, long she was in her pregnancy and stuff. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe this book was rushed out. I'm giving the writer the benefit of the doubt here because I do love her writing style. You know, there, there may be issues with the family and the motivations and having to suspend belief and all that, but I still love how she writes. So I'm wondering if this book was rushed. Just throwing that out there. Either way, I am still invested. I want to know what's going to happen. So like I said, I have no clue. Oh, the one last thing I wanted to point was that Krampus night. Okay, so, you know, Edward was saying he couldn't tell her what was coming up. You know, it all had to be a surprise. All of the new spouses, they go through it every time they join the family and everything. And I said, I would have been, the sonogram might have tampered my anger for a little bit. And then it would have come back at me, especially being pregnant. Because, you, you know, your emotions are heightened. You got a lot of extra hormones to deal with. So I, I would have been livid because what he should have done is taken her inside and said, okay, here's the deal. This is what my family does. Pretend like I didn't tell you, but here's what you're going to expect. That's what would happen in a healthy relationship. And if it was my family doing this, I would like to think that if my parents were, you know, still around and they were the, the patriarch or the mon you know, matriarch of the family and they were running it, or if I was in that place and it was my kids doing this and their spouses and whatnot, I would want my child to clue in the spouse. It's like, okay, here's what's going. And that kind of teaches them to put your new life, your spouse ahead of your family, but you can still honor your family traditions while looking out for your new family. I hope that makes sense. So he should have put her first, but they could have still played along to fulfill the family tradition and keep everybody happy and bring her into the fold. And that would have allevi alleviated a lot of her anger and her terror that night. Anyway, just want to go on record with that. That would have been the healthy thing to do. So I still maintain this couple has no business being together. With all of that being said, let's move in there because I want to find out what's going to happen. I am enjoying it. Despite all of my nitpicking, I am enjoying the book, Catsy. So thank you. And I think definitely if I was reading this at my normal pace and wasn't taking the time to really think about it to discuss with y'all, I probably wouldn't have been bothered by half of this stuff. I still would have been livid about the Krampus night. But I would have, my feathers would have ruffled and I would have moved on and just been like, what's next? Which is what I'm about to do. All right, let's move. Okay, so Lily is outside and I'm betting as soon as I get comfortable, get into the book, she's going to start barking to come in. Well, we'll see. I, I would put money on it. Okay, I'm diving in. I have no idea what I'm in store for, but I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. By the way, I'm still viewing this as a movie. I think as a movie, it would be incredible because I don't think all of these little issues would be quite as obvious. Oh, one last point I forgot to make, and that was the other thing that Michael had an issue with. He was like, if she had listened to all of that tape before going to Krampus, she would have known so much more in, you know, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. So, and, you know, hello, Finley. I guess he didn't want me to be lonely since Lily isn't here. Okay, so she's leaving a trail of letters, which I think is smart. And, you know, I don't know that I trust, you know, only open on, you know, the van of my death. Although to a lawyer, I guess if you're going to, you know, have a, a written confession, I guess a lawyer would be the one place you could do that. I don't know what y'all's y'all's theory on that. I know it's a common thing in like movies and books and everything, but I, I don't know that I would pay it that much trust in somebody to actually put it in writing. You know, once it's in writing or on the internet, it's, it's out there. You, you can't take it back. 
Um, one thing I forgot, and I should probably double back, or maybe she'll say in a minute. Has she reached the end of all of the tapes? Has she read them all or, or listened to them all? I can't remember. She got to part three. I'm going to double back just to make sure. Okay, I don't know. She hit pause, and she was interrupted at the gym, so she didn't finish. Potentially, she didn't finish listening to the tape. Again, before I wrote any letters, especially a confession, I would have played out the whole tape. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she did. We'll, we'll find out. At least she's starting to act smart. She's also... Uh, Recording a copy of it onto her iPhone. The tape, that is. He sold his company for $2.8 billion. Holy crap. That, that's just a world I can't even fathom. He's not out there. She was just trying on the dress. Now she wants in. Yeah, I was wondering about that, if the tape was still going. And I was going to mention that she never stopped it when Edward got home, and apparently it was still running. So the tape's missing, and so was Ed. He probably heard his father's voice. Okay, I take it back. He wasn't gone. He was actually in the office. He's listening to the tape. She recorded over the tape. Good God. Like I said, all you got to do is pop those things out. Okay. I, I don't buy it for a second. I think he erased the tape. I don't think she did it. Because otherwise, why would he have gone into the office and found that? If it was blank. If it wasn't recording anything. Yeah. He's lying. He, he did hear his dad. Because wasn't she sitting there long enough to confirm that the tape was going? Okay. I mean, surely she lingered long enough to hear him talking. She wouldn't just immediately. You don't hit play and then record on this and walk out before a word is spoken. You stick around to make sure it's actually working. Right? And if it was blank, why would he bother to put on the headphones to listen to it when she was playing it out loud without the headphones? And also, he didn't respond to the way that she ran, bolted into the room. He, yeah. He recorded over it. Because all of a sudden, you know, she went to try on her new dress. And all of a sudden now she yell, she's yelling his name through the apartment. And she barrels down the hall with her heels snagging on the carpet. And she flies into the room using the door frame. And, you know, she did a dramatic entry into the room. And he's just casually, what's this? Nope. Not buying it. And it doesn't work that way. Unless it managed to reach the whole end of the tape. Whatever, you know, whatever point he hit, stop to listen. And he wouldn't. I, I'm going to let it go. Because, you know, it, it's not an instant. It has to literally record over it. Although, it could have been there for 30 minutes. Ta cassette tapes were typically 30 minutes or 45 minutes aside. Okay, I will let it go for now. We will see. Okay, at least now she's starting to question whether he erased it or she did. Okay, apparently she did because all she got re on her iPhone was an hour-long recording of her office. Who doesn't confirm? Hello? Why would you walk out before you even start speaking? <sighs> yeah, so she hasn't even listened to the rest of the tape. And she's already written a confession to the Lord. She is probably the least logical person I have ever seen. Like I said, these tapes, 30, 45 minutes max. How could she have not found 45 minutes? Cassie did say that there would be a lot for us to discuss and she's very right. <laughs> okay, last comment and then I'm, I'm just gonna read for a while. But one second she's like, well, how do I know if he listened to it and erased it? You know, how do I know how much he's heard? Why did he go into my office? Why did he do this? And then immediately, because he gives her a chill bottle of water and a, a snack from the gas station. She's like, oh, he's going to be a great husband and a great father. If we ever get that far. 
You just want to upside the head with this girl. What the hell? That would be unsettling seeing the barbed wire on top of the stoned walls around the building, around their house. Look more like a prison than a home. Uh, see, I thought it was called the Hydes because of Hyde Park. Uh, that's, you know, just a very prestigious area. And prestigious is probably not even the right word for it. Um, FDR had his house up there in the Hydes, Hydes Park. And Vanderbilt State is there. So that's what I assumed Hydes meant. And I think it was... <sighs> I forget who wrote the comment. They immediately made the connection to Jekyll and Hyde, you know, with Hyde's Park. I'll have to look. I'll put it on the screen who it was. I bet the grounds at this house is incredible. And knowing that there's Hyde's out there, you know, for the hunters and whatnot, I bet those are going to come into play when she tries to escape out the front. Or at least the fear of somebody being in those hides will be there. Why would he wander off to take a phone call when they're being led to their room? Wouldn't you just answer the call and go to your room and it turns out to be business? You have to... <sighs> and why would you have a state-of-the-art security door sectioning off one wing of the house from the other? Yeah doesn't make sense. I'm assuming she's about to get locked in there by herself. It would have been, it would have made more sense if he had been called away by something else instead of just his phone ringing. I'll let it go. Okay. I, I still, okay. So she just now listened to part four. And he's even, you know, he expected her to listen to it before, before the Krampus party and everything. And he gave her more warning about the Krampus night than her own fiance did. But I, I'm really intrigued by the treasure hunt on Christmas Eve. That sounds like a lot of fun. Although, you know, I, I have a feeling this is going to, you know, be more unsettling and sinister than... Just a treasure hunt on Christmas Eve. I still don't know if he actually, this whole thing is a test, you know, an initiation into the family because they just think that highly of themselves. Granted, they are billionaires. Or if, you know, he's really doing all of these. If he's, I, 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 I don't know. Okay, so she's finally listened to the, Oh, gee, George. It's clear I should have listened to the entire tape long ago. You think? <sighs> I wonder if Robert's putting a deal together to actually buy the company, if he's doing it on the, on the sly. I wonder if he's behind the investors in Hong Kong. Okay, I took a short little break because my son just got home. I wonder if the whole thing is a game. Because she just had a conversation with Edward. And just as Robert predicted, he is trying to talk her out of participating in the Christmas Eve game, which doesn't make sense. You know, he said, you know, there's, you know, nobody's going to be chasing her or anything like that. So he doesn't want her to participate in this game, which I assume wouldn't be scary like the Krampus one. He let her do that one to where she was kind of like the brunt of a joke, but he doesn't want her to participate in the one where they're all following clues to find a Christmas present at the end. That doesn't fit. There's, there's just so many things don't fit, so I can't wait to find out how it's all gonna be resolved at the end. So, I wonder if the whole thing is a, a game, a test, and the whole family is involved on it, which Robert alluded to. And is this kind of you know, we'll be establishing the pecking order. So is she going to go behind her fiance's back and participate in the game like her future father-in-law wants? Or is her loyalty going to be to him and she's going to refuse to play the game? So it's kind of like almost testing where her loyalties will lay. 
and how she's going to fit within this family. I, 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 I don't know. Imagine having the Krampus guy chasing you through that maze. That would have been beyond creepy. Oh, so she's planning to use the hides for herself to hide. Uh, see, I was thinking that there could be people staked out in them to prevent her from leaving. Okay, so it's now, you know, it's still Christmas Eve at, at 7 o'clock. So I would assume their treasure hunt will begin soon. And of course, she hasn't gone to inspect the children's rooms like she was basically told to do. And I would assume that should have been done before the treasure hunt starts. So even though she couldn't get away from Edward to do that, she could easily ask for a tour of the house. He asked to see his room when they were kids, which would lead to, you know, quite easy to go poking around and see. Because apparently that's supposed to give you some insight into what the children were like because the rooms had been held in stasis. I wonder if Edward's room would be the most unsettling of them all. If he's still too perfect. Too good to be true. Because the mother did hint that there's a Hallback temper that she hasn't seen yet. <sighs> She's kissing Edward and she says, you know, that the distinctions between father and son blur once more. I would assume by this point she would have gotten over her infatuation with Robert but apparently it still lingers unless she's just talking about you know she is apprehensive of Robert now so maybe that's you know her apprehension I, I, I don't know apparently she does still have the hots for him Ugh. okay this yeah, you know, they're just now getting the clue that he did his little rhyme and they're getting their first clue for the Christmas Eve thing. All the sinister stuff that may be coming aside, that would be so fun to do on Christmas Eve. Okay, I take it back. This is the sickest game ever. So the winner finds out everybody else's secrets, essentially. And they also prevent them from getting the help that they need, I guess. So once again, why didn't Edward just tell her that? Wow, what is, this is such a sick family. I love it. <laughs> just because I'm not in this world. Okay, so, well, she is, at least this time they've given her the rules and she can back out. So I don't know, would you play or would you back out? I think I would back out. I wouldn't want to know their secrets, especially as an outsider. I guess it would depend on what you're most, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it would really, you know, you would learn to trust each other quick or turn on each other quick and I guess keep your nose above board so you don't have anything that you absolutely need or any secrets that you don't want revealed. Holy hell, though. So can the whole family potentially find out what she did as an 11-year-old? Okay, I cannot wait to see how this plays out. This is, honestly, this is really cool. Because I'm not a part of it. <laughs> okay, so she's got to go to one of the childhood rooms. Up the wooden hill would be the stairs to bed. One of the bedrooms. Happy childhood days. Nothing is quite what it seems. So she has to get one of the kids' rooms. That wasn't, it wasn't happy. As to the impersonal room is Edward's. I think there's a lot more to Edward. Did Edward remake his personality to fit the mold of Bobby? I, and there's something with the, I, I don't understand what the rooms are telling us. Okay, so Edward has changed since his childhood days. I guess that's what it's getting at. Wow, Fiona. She wants her to have an abortion if she wins, and 
exchange for keeping Harriet's secret. Wow, Fiona's vicious. Whoa. <laughs> okay, she gave it right back to her. She just saw her. She married the wrong brother. I, you know what? Honestly, I don't blame her at all. I would be livid if somebody... Fiona is so far out of line telling her not to have any kids and deport the one that she asked. Wow. You know what she just learned and with Fiona's the way Fiona acted I would be scared that she isn't going to try and you know, cause an accident or something to make her miscarry. Uh, I think that woman would definitely kill to preserve the inheritance for her kids. Uh, so is that what makes Harriet different? The fact that not only she's got a really good secret he could hold over her, but she's pregnant. And he would have known right away since they went to the family doctor. I would not want to go down into that well. Uh-uh. I get claustrophobic. I'd be afraid of being trapped down there. Mm -mm. And knowing she's pregnant, why would they do the clue? Force her down into a well like that. They would send her into the freezing water. Into that nasty water with all sorts of bacteria and God knows what. That's all the way up to her waist. Present is under what's around her neck. She actually had to pull a body out of the well. Okay, so I guess he really did kill them. Wow. She didn't look at the face. Although with the smell, of it, is there any chance it was like another Hollywood, like, prosthetic or dummy or something? Was there a chance it wasn't a real body? See, I'm still viewing all of this as a test. Like it's not really, she just followed Fiona into the maze, or at least she assumes, you know, there was the boots and then the snag of clothing on the head of the maze and now she's found blood in the snow. I'm still skeptical. I still feel like everything's kind of staged and she's being tested. Fiona's dead. Is Edward the killer? Because it looks like Fiona's dead. I don't know if I can, you know, turn that into a Hollywood stunt or special effect. He was too good to be true. It looks like Edward is the... Wow. So she's expected to kill Edward? I'm assuming Edward killed Fiona because he heard her threatening Harriet. Wow, so she just found Matilda and Eleanor in the kitchen with the gas on. They've been drugged. Is that why there's that security door so the family could hide from Edward? Okay, so she's just come to you on the hall floor. We're back at the prologue. So Edward's dead. I mean, not Edward, Oliver. Oliver. So he killed his brother. Somebody's going to burn down the house. Edward, Robert's unconscious. So Edward did drug Robert. He was giving him Adderall. I'm not Robert, um, Bobby. Is her present a gun? Oh, it's lighter fluid. Oh, geez, cause she burned the other car. Dang. So is she gonna burn Edward? Oh my God. Oh my 
God. He, he just, of course, they're, they're having the big battle scene in Robert's office and Edward has been a lit, Harriet lit him on fire and he just threw himself down on the rug to, of course, roll out the fire, stop, drop and roll, but the rug had already been doused in gasoline, so I think it, it went, it, oh, she emptied more of, an, of the canister on him as he lunges. <sighs> okay, so he was caught fire in front of the fireplace. She doused him with more lighter fluid. He was in so much pain, he dropped to the floor landing on gasoline on the rug and it just engulfed him. I was going to say flared up. But. So the whole place is about to burn down because there is, she found gasoline everywhere. It had already been poured. I guess Edward was planning to burn down the place and pin it on Harriet. And she just shot him. Although that was a mercy, instead of letting him burn to death. Was Oliver, Oliver wasn't necessarily dead, right? He was alive when she left him behind the day, behind the door. Oh, okay, there's Oliver's body in the hallway. Oh, okay, Stuart was one in the new wing behind the door. Yeah, because the gas had been left on in that room. So how did those two, weren't they in the kitchen? How did they survive that explosion? Oh, into the white corridor up beyond. I jumped ahead. Okay, yeah, because they wouldn't have survived it if they were in that room. They were actually out in the hallway. Oh. Okay, so we're skipping ahead to Iris's birth. Okay, is that in kind of in poor taste that she said, the last Christmas I spent with your father will always be burned into my memories? And into my skin. No, I guess it was intentional. So never mind. She is scarred from the from the fire. So everyone got their presents. Fiona got trust for her boys. Oliver got a company stake for them. Sarah got to take over Oliver's position in the company. Molly got okay. So she made provisions for Fiona's kids. Okay, so they're saying it was a gas leak. Yeah, so they paid that some people to come in and clean up the mess. I just finished it. I have to say, I loved it. <laughs> yes, it has its issues, obviously. But the overall, I, I really like, I think, I really think it needed another round with the editor. I think that would have saved it from a lot. But the holiday games, you know, everything taking place over the holidays and I did not see that it was Edward all along. I mean, he was too good to be true. Okay, I had to pop back in here because I was double checking to make sure there weren't any more comments that I needed to respond to. And I realized I overlooked the fact that Michael called it, you have earned your Sherlock pipe and hat and a trench coat because you called it. You said it was Robert covering for Edward and that he was trying to break the news slowly to Harriet. So good job. All of our wild theories weren't completely off the mark after all. So, but I gotta know, did you really think that that was a legitimate possibility or were you just kind of throwing out the craziest things you could think of like I tend to do sometimes? So let me know and good job, Michael. You, you won the award. Imaginary, but you still won. Okay. Oh, I mean, back to the living room. But never once did I suspect him of actually having committed these murders. They did a great job of keeping the spotlight on Robert 
and having Robert just be so, that whole thing being so unsettling with her attraction to him that I never even batted an eye towards Edward being the one who was actually doing all the killings. In fact, I was spending all of my time trying to make it all be smoke and mirrors and that nobody actually died. So I was trained to, you know, give them an out. I, I, I was hoping it was all going to just turn out to be one big hoax where they were testing her and then she would get mad at them for playing her for a fool and walk off and say, I don't need you. But I, I'm satisfied with the ending. Although I think on the last page, I think there was something when I was reading, you know, her version of the story that she gave to her daughter. I think there was something in there that I was like, but wait, what about? So I'm going to go back and look at that in a second. So, okay, I'm going to chew on this for a little bit because I have found lately that the end video, I always seem like, oh, yes, I read it. I'm done. And then I don't really, and it's later that something new occurs to me that I really wish I had shared with y'all. So I am going to, I think, go have some lunch and then come back. And I'll, I'll see if I can discover what that nagging thought was. Because there was something there. Okay. I will be back. Okay, I went back and reread the confrontation between Edward and Harriet. And it's, I really, I enjoyed this, y'all. I would honestly give it probably 3.75, you know, maybe a four, because you, you can't ignore the Hoping you didn't just hear Finley running across the mic. So, you know, I can't, I can't give it a super high rating because there are definitely issues with the book. But I really enjoyed the story. And ultimately for me, that's what it all comes down to. I'm okay with suspending belief if I get caught up in the story. And I did. So, I, yes, it had its issues most glaring one is why in the world would Harriet not listen to the whole tape at once? You know, she even admits that she should have. And apparently the way it was recorded, she was supposed to have. So, but if it made it so infuriating and so unbelievable at times that I think it really did a disservice to the book. Maybe if the information had been doled out in like letters or something to where she or multiple tapes to where she only had access to part of the information at a time that might have alleviated a lot of our irritation with that aspect of the story but again it wasn't meant to be read in or listened to in small doses like she did that was just what she did so that's just an annoying character <laughs> not very reasonable one so for that reason, I obviously am doc docking it. And there were some, you know, timeline issues, like with her pregnancy, how far along she was. So I, th I think, again, as I said before, maybe another pass with the editor would have caught a lot of this. But all of that aside, I really enjoyed it because I never would have suspected Edward. I, I was so focused on Robert and even all of them being in on it and all along it was Edward. I knew he was good, too good to be true. The one thing that they didn't really give a reasoning for was why Fiona was killed. And it, maybe he overheard her threatening Harriet. I don't know. It did look like he was setting up to just wipe out the whole family because, you know, there was gasoline in a lot of the houses and with the gas being on in the kitchen where his mom and his sister were. So who knows what he intended before that night was over. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I can see myself rereading this again, probably next Christmas, just like Cassie did. So if I hadn't been, you know, looking at it so critically to discuss it with y'all, I, I think I would have enjoyed it even more than I ultimately did. So Cassie, I thank you for bringing this book to our attention. You did say it would have so much for us to discuss and you were right there were so many things that were just like what really and 
that reveal at the end, that scene, that's one of the best I've seen in a long time. So highly enjoyed that. So thank you. I hope y'all enjoyed this as much as I did. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what y'all's take is on everything too. So that'll be fun to discuss it with you in the comments now that we've reached the end of the book. All right, I am planning another Start and Slot Betty read for January, but we'll get a little bit of break. I'm thinking mid-month. So keep an eye out for that. I'll give you a theme. You can submit your books and we will do the wheel again and put it up for a vote. All right, that closes out. Merry Christmas and hopefully I will have a Sims game for y'all soon. I did play Bingo Maze in November and that will be coming up at some point. Well, we'll see how it goes from here. Y'all have a great one and I enjoyed reading this book with you. <laughs> and Finley says goodbye.